Yo, what's up y'all? Welcome back to another Roblox Studio video where today I'll be showing y'all how to make a round system. Today I'll be setting this up for free for all battle game mode, but I'll also make a part two where I'm setting it up for a team based game mode like hide and seek. If you have any other suggestions, like y'all want any other type of game mode, then let me know. And I'll make videos for that as well. But anyways, let's get right into it. Y'all see behind me, I made three maps. This is the basis for how we need to set up our maps. Obviously, you can make the map however you want. What we're going to need in here, we see I have gray, red, blue. We have a spawn folder in here. We have a few parts scattered around. It can be however many spawns. It can be one spawn. It can be a thousand spawns. It, can, it just needs to be based on however many players you want. If you want everyone to spawn in the same spot, we can have one. But if you want 20 players in your game, you can put 20 spawns. You can put 40 spawns. So it's not the same spawns every time. And I also made a lobby. We only need the spawn location out of here, a world spawn as I've called it. So once the round ends, we can just bring the player back to spawn. So anyway, first things first, what we got to do, we got to go to server script service, hit the plus sign, make a new script. We can call this whatever we want, but I'm going to call it main. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get our variables and services. So what I'm going to get first is our replicated storage. So game get service replicated storage. What we need now is our maps folder, so I'll just move this maps folder into our replicated storage. If you don't know how to do this, how to make a folder, let's say we take our maps out of the folder, we just have our three maps here in the workspace, we press Control, Alt, and G, and it will make a new folder for us. But since I've already done that, I'll just go ahead and move it to replicated storage. And in replicated storage, we're also going to make a new string value, and we can call this our status. You can call this whatever you want, but this will basically just send information like waiting for players or how much time is left in the round. This will send that information to the server so our players can know what's going on. We need to get this in our script as well. So we can do local maps. This replicated storage find first child maps. Local status. This replicated storage find first child status. You know what we're also going to need? We're going to need our players. So local players. It's game get service players we also need our world spawn so we can send the player back once the game ended so world spawn is workspace find first child's world spawn you can also call this spawn location if you don't want to change the name and now that we have all this we'll go ahead and make our loop so while task.wait do repeat wait task.wait until number of players get children greater than one so this waits until there are two players in the game. And so once there are two players in our game, we can go ahead and start the game. So we can get our map, local map is maps, get children, math.random1, one, one to number of maps, get children. So this will pick a random map out of one through the number of maps. So we'll go one, two, three, pick any of these maps. And we're going to go ahead and clone this map. So we'll take it out of this folder and we'll put it into the workspace. So map.parent is workspace. So once we have our map, what we need to do, we need to get a table of our players. So local game players is a new table. And then for A, B, and pairs, players get children. So for every player in the server, what we'll do, we'll add them to the game player folder. So insert game players, B, which is our player. And then we need to get the character of our player. So we'll do local character is b.character or b.character added. Wait. So what this will do, it'll get the character or if they don't have one, it'll wait until they have one and then get the character. And then what we need to get now is the spawn location for the player that they're going to get moved to in the map. So local spawns is map, find for child spawns. And then if we have more than one spawn, so if number of spawns get children is greater than one then, we can get our spawn point and set it equal to spawns get children. And then we get math.random one through number spawns get children. So we'll get one of any of our spawns. Let's say it picks the blue map. It will get one of these five spawns. And then we need to move our character to the spawn. So we put character pivot to spawn point dot c frame and we need to set this as local so we can put right here local spawn point and then we don't set it equal to anything so we can change it as we want 
And once we move the character to the spawn point, we want to delete the spawn point so no other character can move there. So if it's a sword fight or any game like that, we would need a free for all. We don't want the players to spawn on top of one another so they could insta kill each other. So we just want to remove that. And then we put else. So if we have only one spawn, so our spawn point is spawns get children one. So this will just be the first spawn. And then we can move our character to the spawn point just the same as before. And we won't destroy it so that every other player can still go to the same spawn. And we can do for I is one through 30. We can do for this, this can be our round timer. So we can go up here, local round timer is two times 60. So this two right here will be our number of minutes. Y'all can change this to whatever you want. We could say five minutes, we could say 10 minutes, we could say a hundred minutes, but I'm gonna say two. We put for I equals one around timer. Do task dot wait one. So every second we need to check if our number of game players is one. So if number of game players equals equals one, then we need to end our round. So we'll put a break at the end. And we'll put our local winner is game players one. So this will be our last player. So we'll say the winner could be me, Tropical Masterpiece. It will take that winner. And we can print winner has won the game. We need to take their name. So winner.name has won the game. And now what we need to do, we need to see if our player is even in the game in the first place. So what we'll do is if the game players is more than one or if it doesn't equal one, we'll put for A, B, and pairs. Game players do. So for every player in the game, we're going to see if they're in the game. So we can put if players find first child b.name doesn't or equals equals nil then table dot remove game players b so we'll move our player from the game players folder so we also need to see is if the player is still in the game so if b dot character is nil then we also remove them table dot remove game players b what we also could do or b dot character find first child tag equals equals nil so what we can do we can set this to playing what we can do up here local playing value is instance dot new bool value into our character and we can call this playing value playing so if they do not have this playing value we'll also remove them from the game players so then when this runs back around actually what we can do we can set this here so move this up here we can remove this else so now before it checks the game players it will go through every player and see if they're not in the game or if they're already dead and it will remove them so if the game players is one it will set our winner and it will print out that the winner has won the game so now we can test this out real quick so you see here we're both in our game we both got teleported to the map we both got a different spawn i spawned in right here so let's say we're going to make this player to reset his character. So he's going to die. And we see that our game has not ended. We have our players still running around. So we need to see what went wrong. In our server, we see that right here, we passed an invalid argument to remove. So I put the player instance instead of the number. It needs the number in the table. So that's a simple fix. We can just go back and change this to A. Now back in studio, we go back to our script. Change this right here to A. Change this right here to A. Let's go back. So now we're back in our game. We see it picked a different map than last time. We have different spawns than last time, even though I put them in the same spot on each map. You can see our players running around. We can reset this one's character. You see once he dies, the game ends. We have our map. Or we didn't delete the other map. We had our intermission. We never teleported our player back to spawn, but we see that overall it will pick a new map. The game will restart and we know what we need to fix. Now back in the script, we need to do local character is winner.character. We need to move our character, character pivot to world spawn.c frame. So we'll move our character back to the spawn. And then at the very end of the game, we'll put map destroy. So we'll remove the map from workspace and it will completely start the game over. So now that we have our script functional, we need to actually make it presentable. 
So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make this go every 10 seconds. So we'll have a 10 second intermission. We can change this however long y'all want. You know what we can do to make this presentable? We can actually present this information to the players. So I'm gonna go to start a GUI, insert a new screen GUI. And I'm gonna call it display. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a UI really quickly. Now that I have my UI, I'm going to change the frame name to display frame, display frame, and our text label will be called status text. Now in our script, every time we have a change, we're going to change our status.value. So when it's waiting for players, status.value, waiting for players. And we can come down here for every second in our round timer and put status.value is our I, so our number. And we can actually set this to round timer, zero, negative one. So we'll start at the number in our round timer or two minutes, and then we'll tick down to zero. So 120, 119, 118 at intervals of negative one. So we'll go down by one second every time. Then we'll set our status value to this, so 12119. That will be our status value. Then we can actually put seconds remaining. And then if the game's over, if the player has won the game, instead of printing this, we can also put status.value is the same thing. So winner.name has won the game. And we also need to teleport everybody to spawn, so if our game players doesn't equal one, we come down here. If our I is zero, then we go ahead and take our characters and we set them to spawn. So for A, B, and pairs, game players do local character is B dot character. If character, then we set them to spawn. So character pivot to or spawn dot C frame. If our number is zero, we can also set our status to dot value to time is up. Status dot value is time is up. Set our quotation mark here. And now that we have all this, we set the status value on the server. We need to take this status information and display it to the client. So we'll put in our display GUI a local script and put local replicated storage. This game gets service replicated storage our local status is rep storage find first child status we can also get our ui information so local ui script.parent local frame is ui.display frame local status text is ui is frame dot status text and we can take every time our status is changed we connect a function to it and we set our status text Dot text is our status dot value. So every time the status value is changed to waiting for players or player has won the game or whatever it's changed to, it will display this on the client and we can call this display handler. Now that we have all this done, we can test this out on our client. So we see it's waiting our 10 seconds. It said waiting for players. And then once it teleported us into the game, it says 1, 18, 1, 15, 1, 14, 1, 13 seconds remaining. We have our players running around. And it displays it on the client fine. And when we reset our player over here, it's going to say that player 2 has won the game. It teleported us into the spawn location. But it will wait our 10 seconds and it will restart the game waiting for players. And since we have two players, it's instantly going to change to the game. And since our stuff still looks a little wonky, we can go to the end and put waiting for players and we can make this wait every two seconds. So it won't just instantly teleport. We can actually also set this here and we can change this to game over and make it wait. We can say three seconds. So we'll say time is up or player two has won the game for however many seconds we want. And then it will say game over or we could change it to intermission, whichever one you prefer. 
So it will tell us it's waiting for players for at least two seconds. And if it has two players, it will start our game. It will change it to 120 seconds remaining. It will tell us the game's over and who won the game. It will tell us the intermission and then it will restart just fine. So for one last test, we see it's waiting for our players. It took us into the game. It says 120 seconds remaining. We have our countdown just fine. It displays our status normally. And then we can reset our character. And when it comes back, it says player one has won the game. If the game ends, game over. You know, we'll restart our waiting for players loop after 10 seconds of intermission. So this could also say intermission if you wanted it to, and it'll say we're waiting for players. And since it only takes two seconds, we have our two players, it'll go right back into the game. So one last change I want to make to this script, since it just goes directly from waiting for players to our seconds remaining, what we can do is once our players have been selected, once there's more than two players, we can change this value to game starting. And then we can also, for every player, we can do task.wait. We can also insert a wait here, task.wait two seconds so we just see our game is starting and it will move all our players to their spawn point actually we can remove this task dot wait we can change the seconds in the remaining to a capital s and a capital r just to make it look a little bit better well anyways that should do it for today y'all thank y'all for watching if you have any suggestions or any ideas any tutorials you want please let me know and i'll go ahead and make a video for that but anyway thank you for watching and i'll see y'all in the next video